Today we're going to read Scuffy the Ted Boat. This is a little golden book. Before we read Scuffy the Ted Boat, I want to share with you a few words I want you to listen for in the book. The first word I want you to listen for is cross. Have you ever heard the word cross? Cross means to be in a not very good mood or to be a little bit angry. Can you say cross? As we read the book, be sure and listen for the word cross. Another word I want you to listen for is brook. Brook. Can you say brook? A brook is a small stream. It's like a river, but smaller. Another word I want you to listen for is brim. Brim means the very top of something that holds a liquid. You can see that the person pouring the milk has poured it over the brim. The glass is full to the very brim. The next word is downstream. Downstream means for something to go in the direction that the water is running. So if the water is moving away from you, then whatever is in the water will move downstream with the water. This word is frightened. Can you say frightened? By looking at the picture, what do you think frightened means? Frightened means scared. The next word is village. A village is a very small city where only a few people live. They would not have tall buildings there. They might have cars, but only a few. You might find rural occupations in a village. Can you say village? The next word is jostling. Jostling means when things are so close together that they bump into each other. Be sure and listen for the word jostling in the story of Scuffy the Tugboat. The last word I want you to listen for is flood. A flood is when water gets into a place where people don't want it. In this flood, you can see that the water is as tall as the houses and has covered up the signs. Say flood. These are the words I want you to listen for as we read the book. Cross, brook, brim, downstream, frightened, village, jostling, and flood. I hope you enjoy this little golden book of Scuffy the Tugboat. This is the title page of the book. It tells us the title again, Scuffy the Tugboat and his adventures down the river. The author of this book is Gertrude Crampton. That means Gertrude wrote the words in the story. The, it's illustrated by Tibber Gurgley. That means Tibber is the one who drew the pictures. Scuffy was sad. Scuffy was cross. Scuffy sniffed his blue smokestack. A toy store is no place for a red painted tugboat, said Scuffy. And he sniffed his blue smokestack again. I was meant for bigger things. He's a little toy tugboat. What kind of bigger things do you think he wants to do? Perhaps you would not be cross if you went sailing, said the man with the polka dotted tie who owned the shop. So one night he took Scuffy home to his little boy. He filled the bathtub with water. Sail, little tugboat, 
said the little boy. I won't sell in a bathtub, said Scuffy. A tub is no place for a red painted tugboat. I was meant for bigger things. What do you think Scuffy the tugboat thinks he's meant for? The next day, the man with the polka dot tie and his little boy carried Scuffy to a laughing brook that started high in the hills. Sail, little tugboat, said the man with the polka dot tie. Here's the brook, a small river, and the man with the polka dotted tie and his little boy are letting Scuffy sail. Do you think this is what Scuffy thinks he's meant for? It was spring, and the brook was full to the brim with its water, and the water moved in a hurry, as all things move in a hurry when it's spring. Scuffy was in a hurry, too. Come back, little tugboat, come back, said the little boy as the hurrying, brimful brook carried Scuffy downstream. Not I! tooted Scuffy. Not I. This is the life for me. So Scuffy thinks he's found what he's meant for by sailing down this little brook of water that's full all the way to the brim. All that day, Scuffy sailed along with the brook past the meadows filled with cowslips, past the women washing clothes on the bank, past the little woods filled with violets. Cows came to the brook to drink. They stood in the cool water, and it was fun to sail around between their legs and bump softly into their noses. It was fun to see them drink. But when a white and brown cow almost drank Scuffy instead of the brook's cool water, Scuffy was frightened. That was not fun. Do you think Scuffy will get back to the man in the polka dot tie and his son? What do you think Scuffy will do next? Do you think Scuffy is satisfied or happy with the bigger things he's found? Night came, and with it the moon. There was nothing to see but the quiet trees. Suddenly an owl called out, Hoot! Hoot! Toot! Toot! cried the frightened tugboat, and he wished he could see the smiling face of the man with the polka dot tie. When morning came, Scuffy was cross instead of frightened. I was meant for bigger things, but which way am I to go, he said. But there was only one way to go, and that was with the running water where the two brooks met to form a small river, and with the river sailed Scuffy, the red, painted tugboat. So apparently Scuffy is still not satisfied. He wants bigger things. He's following the two brooks as they meet into a river downstream. Where has Scuffy gone now? He was proud when he sailed past villages. People build villages at the edge of my river, said Scuffy, and he straightened his blue smokestack. Once Scuffy's river joined a small one jammed with logs. 
Here were men in heavy jackets and great boots walking about on the floating logs, trying to pry them free. Toot, toot, let me through, demanded Scuffy. But the men paid no attention to him. They pushed the logs apart so they would drift with the river to the sawmill in the town. Scuffy bumped along with the jostling logs. Ouch, he cried as two logs bumped together. Do you think Scuffy is happy with the bigger things that he's found? Do you think Scuffy will ever see the man in the polka dot tie again or his little boy? This is a fine river, said Scuffy. But it's very busy and very big for me. He was proud when he sailed under the bridges. My river is so wide and so deep that people must build bridges across it. The river moved through big towns now instead of villages. And the bridges over it were very wide wide enough so that many cars and trucks and streetcars could cross all at once. Do you think Scuffy is happy with the bigger things that he's found? The river got deeper and deeper. Scuffy did not have to tuck up his bottom. The river moved faster and faster. I feel like a train instead of a tugboat, said Scuffy as he was hurried along. He was proud when he passed the old sawmill with its water wheel. You see the sawmill where the logs have come to be turned into lumber? But high in the hills, mountains, in the hills and mountains, the winter snow melted. Water filled the brooks and rushed from the, there into the small rivers. Faster and faster it flowed to the great river where Scuffy sailed. There was too much water in the river, said Scuffy as he pitched and tossed on the waves. Soon it will splash over the top, and what a flood there will be. Soon, great armies of men came to save the fields and towns from the rushing water. Only in a flood would you find things like chairs in the river. How do you think Scuffy is feeling now? See the armies of men who have rush to save the towns. They filled bags with sand and put them at the edge of the river. They're making the banks for the river higher, shouted Scuffy, to hold the water back. The water rose higher and higher. The men built the sandbags higher and higher. Higher went the river, higher went the sandbags. At last the water rose no more. The flood water rushed on to the sea, and Scuffy raced along with the flood. The people and the fields and the towns were safe. How do you think Scuffy feels now that he's in this giant flood? Even the animals can't get away from the water. On went the river to the sea. At last, Scuffy sailed into a big city. Here, the river widened, and all about were docks and wharves. You see the docks and wharves where the big, giant ships can stop? Oh, it was a busy place and a noisy place. The cranes groaned as they swung the cargoes into great ships. 
The porters shouted as they carried suitcases and boxes on board. Horses stamped and truck motors roared. Streetcars clanged and people shouted. Scuffy said, toot toot, but no one noticed. Why do you think no one is noticing little Scuffy? Do you think Scuffy is happy with the bigger things he has found? Do you think he ever misses the man in the polka dot tie or his little boy? Oh no, cried Scuffy when he saw the sea. There is no beginning and there is no end to the sea. I wish I could find the man with the polka dot tie and his little boy. Just as the little red painted tugboat sailed past the last piece of land, a hand reached out and picked him up. Who do you think it is? And there was the man with the polka dot tie and his little boy was beside him. Scuffy is home now with the man with the polka dot tie and his little boy. He sails from one end of the bathtub to the other. This is the place for a red painted tugboat, said Scuffy. And this is the place for me. Do you remember earlier in the story when the man tried to put Scuffy in the bathtub? Did Scuffy like the bathtub the first time? So why after Scuffy's adventures down the river do you think he's happy and satisfied with the bathtub now? Maybe he's realized that bigger things aren't always better, and sometimes it's better to be content with what we have. I hope you enjoyed reading about Scuffy the Tugboat and his adventures down the river.